Now we've got our next guest, so over to you, Lydia. Wow, yes. So this is really interesting conversation I'm looking forward to having um, with Adrian Sell from Oxfordshire Community Foundation. Hello, Adrian. Good morning. It's morning, Adrian. To be here in person. What a treat <laughs> this feels like. How are you, Adrian? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So thank you for coming to sit with me. I mean, obviously, we've had some conversations around equality, diversity and inclusion. I know that you're absolutely passionate to share your perspectives. And this particular conversation is focused a little bit on race equality perspective. So one of the things I wanted to ask you is, you know, why should a white guy care about diversity? And, and what can he do if he does? Thank you. Well, um, I think a bit about my personal background is, is relevant here. Um, and then probably talk about professionally why I think it's important as well but um, my dad was a refugee um, hit from Hungary in 1956 um, he came to the UK and was very warmly welcomed and received and supported by by the Sell family and then changed his name to 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 Sell partly as a mark of thanks but partly because he wanted to fit in and I think there's a lot of white guys and girls from, from you know, poor backgrounds or from disadvantaged backgrounds who can make that shift and, and make that journey. And you know, 20 years after he'd moved to the UK, you might have picked up he had a slight accent still, but otherwise he was very good at learning social norms and etiquette and how to fit in and how to blend in and look like a, a British gentleman, which is kind of part of his ambition in, when he came here. So um, I think that his journey has always been with me. Um, it led me to working with uh, Oxfam on humanitarian relief programs. I've worked in refugee camps in uh, places like uh, southwest Algeria with refugees from Sahara and from Western Sahara and in Rwanda and other places like that. Mm. And seeing up close what you know massive disadvantage and challenges people in those communities face and knowing that however gifted talented however hard you work as an individual mm. if your place and position and standing at birth are against you you're going to struggle ever to make it to where you want to be which isn't to deny that people who are successful work very hard to get where they they do most of them do but there's a whole lot of foundations below that behind them that that i think we forget about because we like to think that we're the products of our own success, of our own endeavours. Um, in terms of professionally, I think it, it, it's massively important to me because, you know, I think we went through this whole conversation around around feminism and women's rights about, you know, why would you exclude half the population from, you know, your talent pool that you're recruiting from, from decision making processes, from thinking, from ideas generation. And I think we've got a similar conversation now when it comes to black and ethnic minority populations. Charities have a, a peculiar and, I think, slightly shameful problem in that we are massively underrepresented, mm -hmm. particularly at board level, particularly at senior leadership level, and particularly for us as a community foundation. We are here to represent and serve the communities of Oxfordshire with a particular focus on those who are disadvantaged, marginalised or excluded. Mm -hmm. And sadly, as we know through the experience we've gone through in the last nine months, that includes a lot of black and ethnic minority populations, unfortunately. So to not have representation and inclusion of those populations in our organisation, I think is a problem and one that I'm hoping to address both behind the scenes and presentationally. Thank you. And obviously you've touched a little bit on why you care about diversity in that question as well. I guess my next question to you is, um, you know, what do you think that more Oxfordshire businesses could be doing when it comes to this issue? Um, I mean, I think I, I, would, I would entreat businesses, and, and many have, to, to get engaged with their local communities. We've seen, you know, massive upsurge of support and activity through the, the COVID response to businesses delivering food, providing people home deliveries and doing a whole range of other things to speak, support people at home. And I think a lot of businesses are genuinely engaged in and part of their local communities and I think you know that, that's fantastic to see and I'd support more people doing that but thinking about you know who are we delivering to and who aren't we delivering to and who are we serving through our, our, our services and, our, and who aren't we reaching. Um, and we've certainly done that as an organisation, looked at our grants programmes through the response to see, you know, which communities are we reaching and which aren't we reaching and trying to make sure that we're reaching all. And that's not just about race, that's about class, that's about geography, it's about a lot of other things. But I think it, as, as you know, someone who, who grew up 
feeling like a bit of an outsider because I don't have long roots in the country. We moved several times when I was growing up. I was always felt like I was on the outside. So I've kind of carried that with me through life and always think about who isn't here, who aren't we talking about, who isn't being included. Mm. And I think that can be a challenging and difficult question, but I think it's a very important one for all organisations and people to think about. So you've been in your role for six months, correct? <laughs> yeah, and, and confirmed as a permanent resident <laughs> a month ago. So, so you're CEO of the Oxford Community yes. Foundation. So I guess, what have you personally done since you've come into your role six months ago to improve diversity and inclusion at OC? Um, I mean, in one sense, not much. I think there's a lot of work still to do. Um, my predecessor, uh, Jane Woodley, did a huge amount of work. I think she spoke I think quite accurately about trying to do work behind the scenes to put the foundations in place um, to make sure we were talking to in conversation with and and getting a better understanding of of the community's needs Um, and then through the COVID response that meant we were able to you know reach out and fund organisations like you know Green Dome Trust in 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 Banbury like Oxford Community Action in Oxford who are working with ethnic minority populations and and making sure that the mainstream services are supplemented with services that that meet the needs of those populations so halal food distribution being being one kind of obvious example Um, so I've tried to pick up on on the work that Jane was doing carry on the conversation we've had I was chairing a voluntary sector uh, coordination group and we had a conversation back in June about diversity and inclusion and race which was a very uncomfortable conversation. Um, and I think we need to sit with that discomfort and think about that discomfort because I think we, it challenges us to think about our own preconceptions and our own, our own positions and the fact that, you know, it's very easy for me as a white male to feel comfortable and secure and, um, and it may not be as easy for other people who aren't white or aren't middle class. And so we need to think about that and talk about that. But talking as... as you were saying earlier isn't enough. Uh, we yeah. need action as well, and and aside from you know making sure we've got grants that are meeting the needs of, of local communities, I've been working with a group of local Black and Asian and other minority ethnic community leaders to try and put together a, an organisation that will better represent their needs and in time advocate on behalf of their organisations and their communities and hold us to account. Um, yeah. And they already have done. You know they've. they've Early on in one of the conversations, people were pointing out to me, you know, we were having a meeting, they were all sitting around the table as volunteers, I was sitting there as a well-played chief executive of a local organisation, and of course I'm the white man in the room, and they were mostly women, all ethnic minorities, um, and all volunteers, and I'm, you know, I'm putting time and energy into try and change that dynamic, because I, it's not a comfortable one and it's not right. Um, and so I hope over time we can, we can build on that work and start to see you know, more black people in, in, on charity boards, more Asian people in senior leadership positions and, and so on and so forth, so that we have a sector that is more accurate, accurately representing the communities we're, we're trying to serve. So it sounds like you have been proactive, in, especially in listening. So thanks for sharing this with us. And, you know, good luck with uh, the next couple of years, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully <laughs> many more than that. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. and, and obviously with your initiatives around EDI. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Lydia. We'll be talking to you. Thank you.